do it again. Joining me now are Maria Teresa Kumar and Angela Rye. Angela, how important is it for the president to go outside the beltway to create change inside Washington? Hi, Rev. It's very important. I think that we have seen now that public pressure is the best way to move this Congress forward. Public pressure because the president has got to continue to emphasize that we, the people, are the United States of America, not the divided states of America, right? At some point, we have to heed the public pressure. We have to heed the public outcry for what is needed to really move this country forward. You know, Maria Teresa, the White House views the inauguration and the State of the Union as cut from the same cloth. An administrative official calls the two speeches two acts of the same play. Does that mean we'll see the same focus, we the people in the State of the Union tomorrow night? I think what we saw in inauguration was him moving the country more towards a progressive agenda and the voters wanting to do that. And you saw that with the increased emphasis on gun control, Violence Against Women Act, the fact that it's gone to, it's gone to the social media waves and people are really galvanizing behind it. You're going to see the exact same thing as he lays out his agenda tomorrow, whether he talks about the economy. It's a perfect time for him to talk about sequestration and really talk about who are the, who are the people that are blocking the, the potential, grant, uh, potential cuts to government, whether you're talking Talking about the Violence Against Women Act, he actually has a bully pulpit that you're going to have over 40 million Americans tuning in tomorrow to say, I, you saw me in Act 1 with my inauguration speech, this is Act 2. And Act 2 is not only am I going to talk to you tomorrow, but I'm going to talk to you for the rest of the week and I'm going to go down into North Carolina and other parts of the country to, so, to make sure that we're talking people to people so that you can galvanize and make sure that you're contacting your legislators and your representatives to make sure that, that, that our agenda of the people passes. That, that is what's interesting to me, Angela. He's going right after the speech on a conference call with grassroots organizers around the country. Then the next day to North Carolina, the day after that to Atlanta, the day after that to Chicago. It's like he's campaigning all over again. He's in campaign mode to push his agenda. It's definitely a form of campaigning, Rev. I think that at this point, um, the administration is clear on the fact that not only does the president have to say with his words in the State of the Union, but also with his actions immediately after the State of the Union. Listen, I'm going to get out here and I'm going to move. I'm going to continue to act. I'm going to continue to line up the American people on my side on the messaging because they're on my side on the issues. And so the president will continue to apply some uh, implicit pressure to Congress to say, I'm going to continue to move. Where are you on tax reform? Where are you on immigration? reform where are you on electoral reform on fixing elections and I don't mean fixing uh, right. in the sense that we've seen in the past right be clear Angela be clear <laughs> now now uh, Maria uh, let me ask you this I saw USA Today uh, made a point you just mentioned 40 million people expected to watch the State of the uh, Union address tomorrow night but USA Today said today that yes, he'll be playing to the 40 uh, million people, he'll be trying to reach them and deal with them, but he'll also be speaking to four individuals, Senator Marco Rubio on immigration, mm -hmm. Senator Dianne Feinstein on gun policy, Congressman Paul Ryan on the budget, and Justice Anthony Kennedy on same-sex marriage. How important is what these four come away with? How important is that to the president's agenda and the future of the country? Well, he want, needs to make sure that he brings folks like Rubio, who right now is really out on a limb with the citizen path to uh, citizenship to a path to, uh, to citizenship for immigration. He needs to basically show an olive branch to him that he's going to help him along. With Senator Feinstein, he needs to make you basically do the exact same thing and say, "I'm going to stand next to you because I know what you're trying to do is incredibly difficult." But with Kennedy, it's going to be curious because he has to drill into Kennedy that Kennedy is can be the vote that basically c cements his legacy of whether or not he decides to pass same-sex marriage. And Kennedy recognizing that this might be his legacy, the more he can emphasize that tomorrow, the president on the State of the Union, I think can move him along to make sure that he yeah. does the right thing as well. Now, Angela, there's been some tension among the Democratic circles and the left about whether they were going to play with age requirements uh, for uh, Medicare. The White House today took that off the table. They ruled out raising the Medicare uh, eligibility age to cut spending. How significant is that to calming down some of the tensions on the center and the left? 
Um, I think very important. Again, when you look at what this White House continues to do, uh, the, the employees, the, the president, the vice president continue to listen to what the public is saying, what really matters, what are the things that we can afford to compromise on, and what are the things that we can't afford to compromise on. Um, and also, just going back to the last point on who the president needs to speak to at the State of the Union, there's something else very important about the State of the Union, and that is who is in attendance. Um, sometimes the most important messaging aspects of the State of the Union are who is in the room and who are the chosen invitees. I think it's critical that you even look at um, the speaker, or not the speaker anymore, but Democratic leader Pelosi and who she's invited to the State of the Union. There's a fourth grader from Newtown who she's invited, right. not from the school, but that says, you know, I want Congress to act on gun control measures. And I think that there's a lot that the Democrats can do to watch out for messaging in the State of the Union, not only the address, but also the participants, including what's going on with Medicare and Social Security. Yeah, and to have that fourth grader there and someone bring Ted Nugent still bothers me, but I'll yeah. leave that alone. But let, let me ask you this, uh, uh, Maria. Uh, when you look at the fact that Senator Rand Paul was asked to give the Tea Party response, yeah. now w w it would be seen as divisive given that there's already a Republican response. Listen to this. To me, I see it as uh, extra response. I don't see it as necessarily divisive. You know, I won't say anything on there that necessarily is like, oh, Marco Rio is wrong. Not necessarily divisive. Right. <laughs> Doesn't this hurt the GOP message and as a result really helps the president? Well, if you recall, Michelle Bachman did something very similar, and it was disastrous. I mean, if you recall, she, she was looking at the wrong teleprompter. That's just the beginning of what her me the, how off she was with her message. But it it, what, he, what Rand Paul is demonstrating is that the Republican Party can't get their act together. They can't go file and rank. And that's why, even though they keep trying to say that they want to rebrand, they keep having the squeaky wheel that basically reminds everybody how extremist their party really is. And that, I think, is only detrimental to the Republican Party. Well, Maria, Teresa, you know how much I respect you, but the wrong teleprompter wasn't all that was wrong with Michelle Bachman's <laughs> I said that was the message. beginning. <laughs> I said that was Maria, the beginning. Maria, Teresa, Kumar, and Angela Rye, thank you mm -hmm. both very much for your time.